Hi, I'm Kerry, and this is Mike. Hello, and that's a prawn. Um, yes. <laughs> we're we're going to show you today how I made the prawn mask for Jim Sterling's Jimquisition videos. It's awesome. It's weird. It's uh, made of leather. So I'm going to split this into two parts. First part, leather cutting and, and uh, soaking and stretching. And then mm. part two, assembly and painting. So. So this is it from lots of angles we're seeing now. It's got a little mohawk going on there. And I guess you knew it was going to be under a hood, so you didn't have to do the back. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That was how it went. It was never going to have a, a back. To I mean, for a leather mask, it stretches back quite far. Yeah. Most of them tend to be just the, the front part of the, the face. Yeah. I've, I can, I've seen, like, the mock-ups and stuff that exist. Oh, this is... So this is... Talk me through this. What's this? So this is a head. <laughs> yeah. I'm using um, polystyrene mannequin heads for the base for this. I got two because I wasn't quite sure which one, what, well, what size they would be when they arrived. And um, because I'm in a completely different country to Jim, I had his facial measurements, but I didn't, I, so I couldn't make a mold of his face to make sure the underside of the, uh, the mask was right. So here, what I'm doing is I'm just gluing it down to the base with some basic contact adhesive. <laughs> this stuff you use a lot I'm noticing, <laughs> I know yeah. it looks like honey it looks like you're just kind of making a delicious honey sandwich yeah. can I can I just say like that that turntable you have there it's very professional looking it's DJ Hero I know <laughs> I know it's your DJ Hero and I'm guessing I'm not allowed to use that play with that anymore that's okay ah yeah, sure you are you can use it whenever that's you want I'll never be able to do the DJ Yoda playlist again so you're doing measurements now what he's got some horrible facial problems though. yeah that's just you know that's that's what I got sent from the uh, the mannequin company it's it arrived in like a really messed up <sighs> squashed box time was a mannequin company would take pride in their work and they wouldn't <laughs> so this clay this is you building Jim's right. face right? so the plan here was I was gonna um, have kind of a, a base layer of standard air dry clay just to bulk out the epoxy clay I'm gonna use later but actually, the epoxy clay went quite far, and I didn't really need to do this. This so I, it's a waste I, of time. What we're seeing right sort now, sort of, yeah. And then I'm I'm cutting into the the head. Yeah, I'm just trying to get the, kind of the basic proportions of of Jim's face. Yeah, because so he sent all those over that. to you. Yeah, he sent me all of his head measurements. It's so. very diligent. Yeah. So, but what we're seeing here basically is you wasting your time. Look at that. Well, no, stupid this this Gary needed doing. <laughs> this needed doing. Yeah. What I'm saying is that I should have just used the epoxy clay from the start. Yeah. instead of uh, using air dry stuff to mm -hmm. bulk it out because uh, I've got tons of tons of the epoxy stuff left now it's quite grisly I uh, yeah don't cut towards your hands never no that's really never, never cut towards your hands like this it's, that's bad uh, that's bad but you're sculpting there Jim's face mm -hmm. so what I'm going to do is start make, by making a base of his face mm. and then because what we want is a is a former for the for the leather, something that it can stretch over the top of. I'm gonna sculpt in all the high points, so right. all of the all of the areas that are gonna stick out, or uh, the the ridgy sections and the areas around the eyes. That the stuff you want to accentuate. And, I, right? and here I'm constantly measuring it to make sure I get the right. I'm, I'm not going for an exact copy of his face, yeah. but I want to make sure I've got a good. A good basis. So if you're in the same continent, presumably you'd do a mould, right? I'd just mould the face. face. Yeah. yeah. And then you'd add to it with this stuff. Not with this stuff, probably with the epoxy. The, the reason I wouldn't, I wouldn't use this for leather stretching um, is because it's water-based. So when you soak the leather, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wet the uh, clay and it's going to... Which gonna... would moisten again. So what I did here was I sealed it with PVA glue, just oh, yeah. like regular craft glue. I was um, going to say, this kind of clay is the kind of clay I played with in school, right? Where it was yeah. wet and they dried, yeah. Yeah, essentially. Standard air dry standard, clay. Standard so clay. this is the epoxy stuff, part A and B. Um, I'm using, I think it's free, yeah, freeform sculpt from um, Smooth On. Okay. And it's like any any kind of epoxy. You mix the two parts together, mm. the uh, resin and the hardener, and just apply it. I'm is that using, you ruining one of our egg cups as well on the bottom? Let's the, uh, not go side. into that. Um, I'm using water to smooth out the surface. Okay. And you, I remember you had like big pictures of Jim Sterling all around you while you were doing this. I do. I think I've got one of those coming up. Because that's, I, I feel like I feel like I've seen Jim's face a lot in the last in the, like, in the last few weeks. Because he's been on my computer. Yeah, and then his voice is in my game, so I've been hearing him a lot. It's just, it's just, mm. yeah, it's, he's been a he's been a presence, constant presence. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure how I feel about that. Well, plus we've been listening to the podcast and his videos. Yeah, and, yeah. he's had enough of a plug now. He's, it's fine. He's 
he's everywhere. Thank God for him. <laughs> but yeah, this is so. This is you're putting a layer on top. So this is this is now the stuff that will yeah, not so be. I it would, can get wet, right? This I can would get wet. have started with this. <laughs> right. Really, I should have started with this because it, it actually sticks to uh, polystyrene really well. It turns out. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's a it's an epoxy putty, uh-huh. and uh, you've got about a, an hour's working time, which is why I'm moving so fast. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing your old your old quicksilver thing again. Yeah. So you go shaping the eyes, and I probably didn't need to put in as much detail as that. I was going to say you, you I, seem to have been doing too good a job here. Like this is, yeah, do those eyes need to no, be as perfect? Not, not even, not at all. But I wanted to make sure I knew where there the, he is. here are my reference images. So all of these uh, shrimps and prawns and the uh, pig mask from mm-hmm. Saw. Okay, and that's now. So the that's face. it set. We. <laughs> so that's what it looks like set, and now I'm mixing up. Uh, later that day, another batch of um, of epoxy. Hmm. Um, the idea now is to to sculpt on all those raised sections and the ridging around the eye, that kind of thing. Gotcha. So now you're now now you're adding to Jim. You're you're doing stuff yeah, that obviously got, isn't on his face. We got some face. basic Jim. Also, I haven't bothered with the Wee. the lower half of the face because um, the mask the mask kind of slopes away from the the nose and the and the cheekbones yeah. and it juts out so it doesn't need to form to the bottom of the face mm-hmm. in any way so i'm doing that that central ridge yeah yeah that those those blades sit on mm-hmm. kudos to freestyle games for the uh the hardware here that that turntable is brilliant that's that's doing a great <laughs> job i'm loving it I, I still use it all the time i need yeah. i need to get myself oh and that's up. an eyeball so this is a, a plastic christmas bauble mm-hmm. the kind that you can split in half and put things inside of and I, what I've done there is cover it with a layer of uh, spray wax, just so that it doesn't stick, like it doesn't get stuck inside the eye socket. But I want to make sure I've got a good amount of space for that eye to right, sit. Right. Okay. So you're building around it here. Yeah. 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 I like it, Jazzy. <laughs> and just working out that that's so that's in the final mask is going to sit in the right place that that Jim can see through it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's why I wanted to make sure I had the eyes the right distance apart, and I probably spent longer on them than I needed to. Mm-hmm. But again, because this is because we're not using this for moulding, it's for um, a face form for stretching something over the top and something that's quite a thick material because we're using leather. It doesn't need to be perfectly smooth either. No, no, you're just you're just making it. Yeah, you're making the underlying structure that's that you're going to stretch the thing on top mm-hmm. of. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And this is kind of like your Klingon side ridges, right? There's kind of that slight pronouncing yeah. on the temples and things. Yeah, yeah. yeah I had a lot of well, I. I yeah, <laughs> I looked at a lot of prawns and shrimps and, you know, the the general, it's, they're, they're very different from, from the, obviously from the structure of a human face, but I wanted to get, they've got a lot of ridges and all of them point forward to that mouth, the mouth and all the little mouth parts that jut out in front of it. So everything is just sort of pointing down towards that, mm-hmm. which is why I've got all of these ridges and spikes heading in that direction. so yeah I'm taking out what I did here was I took out the the eyes just before the clay sets about 30 minutes in when it starts getting a little bit tougher yeah so now I'm I'm using is this um, what leather looks like before it's (laughs) this is foil with parchment paper attached to the back of it I don't know I just got it from the I found it in the shop um you can just use foil or, or any kind of Maybe cling film or, or something, just to get an idea of the the shape of that face. Oh, I see the kind I'm of the unfolded, yeah. Again. Yeah, just just a very basic idea, so that I, I've got something I can I can make a pattern from. Mm-hmm. Now this this was kind of my my trial pattern because I I sort of figured this I'd never done any leather stretching before, so I kind of thought this first one wasn't really going to work. I just saw a lollipop stick being used. Do you not have a ruler? If you need a ruler, we'll get a ruler. I couldn't find it at the time. <laughs> I've, I know where it is now, but uh, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. There you go. Symmetry. <laughs> yeah. Isn't symmetry wonderful? It is. Mm. It's bold to assume that your sculpture is symmetrical, though. But fair play. And this is your this is your leather. This is the leather. Yep. And that's the underside of the leather. So what kind of leather is it? This is vegetable tan leather. Okay. It hasn't been dyed or processed. It doesn't have like a, a finishing coating on it or anything like that. So that you can soak it and stretch it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm marking out on the underside because you know you don't want to you don't want to get any marks on the um the front of the leather where you sure. might end up seeing it. Oh yeah. Again, I was pretty certain this piece wasn't gonna wasn't gonna work. 
No, I remember this my, was your prototype. My, I rough yeah, and ready. Yeah, just just because it was, I'd you know I'd seen other people stretching leather, but I hadn't tried it out myself, and I wasn't mm-hmm. entirely sure how it was going to work out. So I'm just taking the edges off, making it all pretty. It's your beveling. Edge beveling. Bevel, edge beveling. Mhm. Mhm. Oh yeah, because at this point as well, you were thinking that the the tentacles coming down would be kind of part of the. The, the, main, main mask. the main mask. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't entirely decided if they were going to be uh, one piece or if they were going to be extra sections. I mean, I knew I was going to have e- uh, I going additional to the shop sections to coming that. out the site. Well, yeah, it's a turkey roasting. I remember tin, us I asking if they had a large one and them saying, well, what, what are you cooking? What would you want a large one for? And you said, because I want to soak some leather in water. And the lady of the shop gave you a look. Yeah. And yeah, that was good. It was a good moment. How long do you soak it for? <laughs> About two hours. Okay. Although I, th- I think at this point, because it's quite a large piece, I came back at the two hour mark here and tried bending the uh, the little frond bits at the front. And it wasn't, and it wasn't quite you. doing it, so I, I left it for another hour or so. Yep. And then oh. take out the water and uh, just let it drip for a while because it's going to have quite a lot of liquid still in it. Um, here I was just checking that the eyes were in the right place and, and figuring out where everything was and how this was going to work so you know sorting out where that that central ridge point was and then figuring it out from there Mm -hmm. Um, ultimately where this one went wrong was that I I assumed I would be able to use my staple gum to just staple right through the leather into the head yeah and it's not powerful enough for that it was it was getting through the leather but not through the epoxy because the epoxy is way too tough for it Mm. here I am figuring out where that that central point for the ridges needs to go because because this mask wraps around the the back of the top of the head you need it to to kind of you need a space there that's the rubbish stapler not working (laughs) oh (laughs) i get i think i gave up at this point i I, yeah i think i remember you getting quite angry with this (laughs) that's why there's not a lot of footage of it (laughs) because you smashed the camera (laughs) yeah you go new camera so this meant that i i could figure out where the that that central I got yeah. Uh, so you get that. Needed to come out. So you get that curve. Yeah, and I got. I made a new pattern. Ah. Um, still hadn't decided how I was gonna do those that that do that front section. Mm-hmm. Leather cutting with a scalpel, very sharp scalpel. You're not drawing it out beforehand though. You've, no, you're I. You're a little over eager at this stage. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I didn't like the the marks that the pen left on the under, underside of the leather. I can't. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I went I went through and just taped it all down. Oh, bit of a breeze. Bit of a breeze. Yeah, I guess I had the window open. I guess so. <laughs> Sorry. This is I'm, thrilling. I'm not pointing out any of the interesting stuff mm. here. I apologise. <laughs> um, obviously, the craft is very impressive, but I noticed a breeze and had to. I don't know why yeah. I had to point that out. So on on the the front sections there, I, I went through and sort of did like hesitant little little uh, light scalpel marks, and then went back through and and shored those up afterwards right same with these eyes i popped it on and then cut through properly afterwards beveling the edges again beveling the edges bevel those edges you gotta bevel those edges that's that's the difference between the the sections at the front because i couldn't quite get in there with the edge beveler i used the um Uh the scalpel instead it's just not quite big enough is it (laughs) no no, i just i didn't fill it completely because you i couldn't lift it with that much water with more water than that in it okay it's all right. I've got. I've got. A oh, you got backup water. Got backup water see. right there. See, planning ahead. Okay, so that's soaked for about two or three hours. The color of the water is not pleasant. Is no, it? it goes really yellow. Yeah. So the problem with these front sections was I've made them too thin to to bend. Right. They, they, just they weren't holding the shape. No, not at all. So I'm. I, I tried a few things. Like I t- tied cotton around all of them mm-hmm. so that it looks a bit like Predator. Nice. <laughs> But that didn't that didn't really work. Um, so I don't have any footage of the actual <clears throat> stretching because the uh, the camera died. Yeah. While I was filming that. But it's just basically just stretching it over the mm-hmm. thing and then so, screwing it down. So yeah, instead of instead of uh, staples, what I used were panel pins, and uh, and screws. Mm-hmm. And I went for the any area where I knew was that I knew was going to be covered up. Um, I, I'm quite happy to. That's where you can make a mark quite comfortably. Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, and then here's the the awl again. You remember the awl? I do remember the awl. Yeah. Problem is, it's not really going all the way through the leather because mm. this leather's a bit chunkier, and and also it has to get through the epoxy on the other side, which is too tough for it. Um, so I got out my, my Dremel and 
drilled a ton of holes. Although actually I think that's in a... I'm not sure what tool I'm using on the end of that. It's not a drill bit. So is this... You're going to sew this up, are you? Is that the... Yeah. So the, all right. So the reason I'm doing it now before I take the leather off of the former is I want to make sure all of the holes line up. Yeah. So that they're all in place and I can just stitch it so everything everything fits together. Gotcha. Perfectly. How long did you have to leave it overnight to dry or something? I left... Yeah, yeah. Overnight. Yeah. It was dried. But I think I actually left it a few days in the end, but... You really only need to leave it overnight. Cool. Oh, That's the moment of truth, yeah. yeah, yeah. My hair just completely unfurled <laughs> at that point. That's me. Messed up epoxy head bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess that bit doesn't matter anymore, does it? That's no, all. It, it's no. useful, but it's, mm. not, it's not the point of the thing. So I tried to get hold of some pink or some, some red uh, cord for stitching leather, but they, they just didn't, at least at the, the supply shop I went to, they didn't make it or they didn't have it. So uh, I bought some plain stuff and then figured I could dye it later, just in, in case that was something you were going to see. Um, and the holes weren't big enough. Just I had to go through. Yeah, have to go, just go over them again. I'm always impressed by how much kind of you have to think on the fly with this stuff and, and kind of replan things out. Yeah. You, don't sit, you don't sit down and like, this is how we're going to do it. And it then just... I do. <laughs> and then it all goes wrong and yeah. you have to change it. Yeah, no, <laughs> but I like that's cool though. That, that's, you know, that's good. I mean, if sense. it was a if it was a puppet, a stop motion puppet, I'd have a better plan for what I was doing yeah. first time. But um, this, yeah, this was entirely new to me. That's cool. I think it's very easy. I, I know I underestimate how much is actually involved in doing this kind of thing. And it's quite boring watching me stitch stuff, isn't it? It's uh, it's it's you're a farce at least. Are we going to see the whole thing? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll cut it in a minute. Are we? Are we? It'll, there, cut, yeah. it'll cut soon. There you okay. go. So these are the sections I used for the, the side and the front. I guess I'm going to call them fronds. Okay. I don't know what they're called on shrimps. Do you know what those bits are called? I'm not a marine biologist, so no. Mm. Um, fronds. Fronds is Fron good. Fronds will do. Those are, these are, what these are, are the, plates? These are the head ridges. Head ridges. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and you've scored so them. Yeah. So, um... That, and they're all numbered so that I, uh, I make sure I, I get them in the right order. They they sort of scale up. The, I've got really small ones at the bottom and mm -hmm. then they get thicker as they, they get to the top and the back. Um, I'm going around and cutting off all of the edges again mm -hmm. here. And then what I'm going to do next is, uh, here we go, I'm using the, the, my template and I've got the, the middle section uh, mapped out on there. And then I'm going to draw a line from that middle. Oh, you, you found go. your ruler. I found the ruler, yeah. I found your ruler. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness. Um, so I'm going to mark down from that, that middle point score down to the point at the end. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to cut about a third of the way down. Yeah. God, you you, you do take some risks without scalpel, don't you? A little bit. Well, I'm pretty confident with it, but I, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, but... No. no. So, I, okay, maybe, oh, maybe, I'm, maybe I was supposed <laughs> to cut this. it like two thirds of the way down and I, I didn't quite do it far enough anyway and I'm bending it and um, and just cutting off uh, the sections in the... this is really bad <laughs> Kerry what you're doing right now is really <laughs> this is not how it should be look at that jugular no, not jugular vein but the wrist your wrist vein was popping there as the scalpel <laughs> moved towards it this so is terrible computers are safer <laughs> computers are safer this is cool. This reminds me of like the spines on those wooden dinosaur skeletons that you get, and they're all numbered, and you have to put the vertebrae in the right order. Oh, Do you know what I mean? Dinosaur kits, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, yeah. The, like the know, wooden the, skeleton like ones, the wooden yeah. ones that pop out of a panel, and you you get all yeah. these flat pieces. That's as together. close to physical creativity as I get. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my level of craft okay. craftsmanship. I'm, I'm taking off the the rough edges here. I've I've gone round and beveled them, but yeah. they need smoothing down with. Uh, Water. Mm -hmm. now you're I think it's called a, a buffing wheel or something like that you're supposed to use, but uh, apparently cloth bit water. Okay. That, that does it just as well. Leather um, sinks, right? So that's relatively easy once they're submerged. Oh, and then yeah. time passes. Yeah, a couple of hours. Now Been that's in nice for a bit and of a malleable. Sink. So here you can see um, how soft the leather gets and how easy it is to work with and bend it into shape. Nice. Um, I'm going to go through and do that with, with all of these spiky the ridges. Spiky ridge sections, up. yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So we've got the numbers on them. Yeah, <laughs> those <laughs> all important numbers that I'm definitely going to follow when it <laughs> when it gets to it. It's cool. You've got to play <laughs> by it. Yeah. That's cool. So yeah, why you are you really, doing this you... all one-handed? That's my question <laughs> to you. Huh? 
because it's pretty it's easy weird. to do. You don't really need the yeah, other hand. You, you I mean, I do here. Hey, See? Two hands. hands. Two hands. Yeah. It's quite. It's quite easy to to bend the leather into the shape you want. Mm. And the important thing is that you want to keep coming back to it as well. So I've bent all of those shapes, but I've I, I've left them for like an hour, maybe two, mm-hmm. and then come back and checked on them again. And you know, if there are any bits that are that are moving out of shape, because they're not with small pieces like this. It's fairly easy to get them to stay in the shape you want them and to. And those swans are like thicker now, right? Yeah, but yeah. with something like the mask, um, I had to keep coming back to that and keep like working into those mm-hmm. uh, the dips and the details and and just pressing it and molding it. And here, it, this is a couple of hours later, or now maybe a few more hours later. I'm just coming in and checking again. Like you can see that some of them have, have dried a bit, mm-hmm. um, but you want to keep coming back to it and pressing it into shape. And then here, I'm bending it around and forming it to the to the shape I want it to be and when it attaches to the mask. Nice. Um, and then working on, on all the remaining frondy bits. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also important to, to carry on that, at least with this, to carry on that curved shape up to the top there. I'm using I'm using a lolly stick to do that. Nice. So now we've got all of our parts. That's the uh, the main mask and we've got all of the, the mouth bits and everything. And that is the end of part one. Cool. So next what we're gonna be doing is over on part two Putting it all together and painting and, and working and, and nice. all that kind of fun stuff. Very cool. So uh, here's a link to part two um, and probably a link to gym stuff, uh, gymquisition. Mm-hmm. Um, like and subscribe. It? Oh yeah. What are you gonna ask them to comment on on this one? Uh, have you ever have you ever gotten some leather wet and then shaped it into something else? Tell us your stories. Uh, that, that might be a work. dodgy a question that you think it is. Okay. Yeah. Maybe not then. No. Bye. Bye.